Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 17th of February 2020 and the time is just gone 10.10 GMT. And it's been a fairly positive start to the European trading session. Uh, the major European, European indices are showing slight gains, fairly modest gains. Um, but the gains that we're, that, are, that we're seeing in Europe at the moment are relatively small to the fairly large gains that we saw uh, in China. Um, essentially, um, the, given the deepening health crisis in relation to the coronavirus in China, the Chinese authorities have come out and made it clear that they're going to go down the route of supporting the economy. So there's talk that the People's Bank of China, the Chinese Central Bank, is going to in inject further liquidity into the market. On top of that, there's also talk about a, a, a tax cut being proposed as well as a way of, a way of uh, encouraging economic activity. Um, and it's not just China that, that, this, that this is going on in, in relation to governments uh, intervening. Uh, there's also talk that Singapore, the government of Singapore, is going to is also going to have some sort of stimulus pa package or in relation to potentially in relation to cutting taxes as a way of assisting the economy. Um, and with this. Uh, we did see a decent uh, move to the upside in Chinese stocks overnight, and that positive sentiment has all flowed over to the European session, although the gains in Europe are fairly small. Uh, also, in the last uh, 24 hours, 48 hours, we've had some pretty awful growth figures out of Japan. In the fourth quarter, the Japanese economy contracted on a quarterly basis by 6.3%, which is quite sizable. Um, much worse than the contraction of 3.7% that was expected. So uh, this was driven by a consumption tax with um, help, you know, really uh, clobbered growth uh, in the last three months of 2019. And with such a deep um, contraction in growth, uh, there's already kind of chatter about is it, could, we, could, we, could we be potentially looking at a recession in Japan. Um, so all the, these are the, kind of the big stories of the past 24 hours, 48 hours. Um, Today's trading session is going to be fairly quiet. Uh, the European markets are going to be fairly quiet. This is because in the US they have a public holiday. It's President's Day, so the New York Stock Exchange is closed. And whenever you have a whenever you have a European trading session with the US closed, trading volumes and volatility are tend to be very low. So today's session tends to be fair, is uh, is fairly is likely to be fairly quiet. But keep in mind. Um, the strong gains that we that we saw in in in, uh, in Asia overnight, you know, in China particularly, should translate into kind of a positive st sentiment uh, for the rest of the trading week. Uh, what I'll quickly quickly do now is take a look at the big events of, of the week ahead. The week ahead article can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, under news and analysis. This is where you'll find the article. I'll take a quick run through of the major corporate stories and economic events of the week, and then look at some of the big, most popular markets, indices, currencies, and commodities. So uh, today, well, tonight, technically speaking, because it's an, it's an Australian, the a Julissi company, BHP have first half figures. They'll be out at night time, UK time, or Monday morning, uh, or on the morning of Tuesday, the 18th of February, um, morning time for, um, out, of, out of Australia. Uh, tomorrow we will have the full year figures from HSBC. This is going to be interesting because the bank makes a, a large portion of its money from the Far East, given what's going on in relation to the health crisis in, in, in China and also the political unrest uh, in, in Hong Kong in recent months. That's going to be of interest. Uh, on the next few days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have quite a few important economic indicators of the UK. We have unemployment and wages, we have retail, we have CPI. And also, we'll have retail sales. On Wednesday, we'll have Canadian CPI. Um, on Wednesday, we will have the minutes from the Federal Reserve's meeting last month, uh, where rates were kept on hold, meeting expectations. On Thursday, we have full year figures from Lloyd's. Uh, we have full year figures from Anglo American. Um, on Friday, at the back end of the week, we'll have the very different flash manufacturing and service PMI reports uh, from basically the major European economies and also the US. And then also looking, and finally on Friday, we have the first quarter figures from Deere. Deere, uh, you, you might know them as the uh, for like John Deere tractors and what have you. Um, we'll take a look now at what's going on on the FTSE 100. 
so broadly speaking, in the last few months, the FTSE 100 have been, has been pushing higher. But the, the FTSE has, has definitely underperformed compared to, say, some of the stock markets of Europe and particularly those of the US. Um, the FTSE 100 has a disproportionately large amount of exposure to mining stocks and oil and gas stocks. And with that, because they've been clobbered on account of what's going on in the fear surrounding China, uh, the FTSE 100 hasn't done as well as, say, the DAX or the S&P 500, which should be coming on to in a minute. So the broad trend has for the last number of months, since October onwards, has been to the upside. But we can see here the FTSE 100 uh, is, is, is back below this blue line here, the 50-day moving average in around um, 7,500. <coughs> in around 7,500. If it can hold above this red line, the 200 moving average, which comes to play at 7,366, if it can hold above that, it's likely that the wider upward trend could continue. And should that be the case, we could look at retesting the, uh, the mid February highs here in around 7,562. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting this area here, <coughs> excuse me, in around. 7,600. If, on the other hand, we do have a sizable break below the 30 moving average here, this red line here, that could set us back towards the, the late January lows in this area here, in around 7,232. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading back down towards 7,200. Notice how we had a fair bit of consolidation in that zone in the past, so it makes it more likely that area will be of importance in the future. Over in Germany, the DAX is in very good shape. Not a million miles from uh, not a million miles from all-time high territory. This is this is what I mean about how the, the FTSE is languishing uh, in comparison to the uh, in, in comparison with the DAX and also the S&P, which I'll show you in a few minutes. So if you, if you take a look at the price action throughout February, uh, we had the aggressive sell-off. Um, on the back of the coronavirus fears from early February onwards, we had the Chinese authorities um, assisting the, the, the Chinese economy. We've seen a jolt higher in the DAX. It's been driving higher. We've set all-time highs. We're not too far away from all-time highs at the moment. So if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 30,800, 900, and then, of course, 14,000 would be the next big psychological number. Should we see a pullback in the stock? Support can be found in this zone here, down around 30,640, down to 13,600. And even, even if you go below that, uh, the upward trend is still likely to be in play. Uh, if you do go below that, this area here, in around 13,400, uh, could, uh, could potentially act as support. We can see on a few occasions that area, or maybe just south of it, acted as support in the past, so it makes it more likely that that area will, will be of importance in the future. It's only really... If you have a size of break below this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, could then we begin to think oh, actually, maybe maybe the wider upper trend um, has, uh, has, has come to an end. I take a look at what's going on on the US. Like I said, US stock market, the actual equities will, will remain closed today as of present day, but the, uh, the futures are trading for a number of hours. But I suspect volumes are going to be low and, tra and trading ranges are going to be narrow. But this is another good example of how strong the U.S. markets are. You know, it was only last week we were setting all-time highs on the on the uh, on the likes of the of the Dow Jones. So we're still very much in the kind of strong upward trend. If we do press on higher from here, we could look at retesting the recent all-time high in around 29,586 there thereabouts at that sort of zone. And if you press on higher beyond that, we could be targeting 29,600, 700, 800, so on and so forth. Uh, if you do look to have a fairly decent move uh, to the downside, support could, could come into play in around 29,000 or the, the mid-February lows in around 28,924. And even if you go below, below that, the 50 moving average, this blue line here, in around 28,770, there thereabouts, that could potentially act as support as well. I'll take a look now at the S&P 500. It's a fairly similar position uh, whereby it's hit an all-time high recently. And the wider upper trend is still very much in play. 
so the upward trend is still very much in play. We're, um, you know, the next big level to watch out for will be 3,400. Should you see a pullback from these levels, support could be found in around this area, 3,360 down to 3,350 there thereabouts. And it's you know essentially while we hold above this area, 3,300. If you can hold above that metric, it's likely that the wider upward trend is going to continue. And even if you don't, even if you break below that, this this uh, blue line here, the 50 moving average, acted nicely as support at the, in the late January, early February. So even if you head, head below 3,300, we could look at finding support from this area here, uh, the 50 moving average, and that comes into play in around 3,265. So we'll take a look at some big currencies now. Currency pair starting off with the euro dollar. The euro had a pretty terrible week last week. Uh, last week, uh, euro dollar fell to its lowest level since May 2017. Uh, so we're not we're not too far off, you know, a three year low on euro dollar. And to be honest, there was no real kind of catalyst that really kind of sparked that massive sell off. Uh, it was possibly more down the dollar strength, but it just got chipped away and chipped away. And as you can see, the last few months since basically the end of December there's been a nice example of a downward trend on the on the uh, on euro dollar like I said we hit you know over a two and a half year low nearly a three year low uh, on, on Friday we have managed to rebound this ever so slightly not on the ground if we can hold above the Friday's low we could see a bit of profit taking push the market higher from here uh, we could head back up towards 109 or th this area here in at one spot 0925 as a potential area of resistance but keep in mind like i said we, you know we hit a, hit a level last seen in may 2017 so the the, uh, the trend is clearly very much to the downside so if we do press on lower from here we could be looking heading back down towards one spot zero eight i took a look now at what's going on on the pound versus the us dollar we saw a decent increase in volatility last week on the, uh, the shock announcement that Sajid Javid um, stepped down as Chancellor of the Exchequer in the, in, in the UK. Uh, and, and the new Chancellor is the relatively unknown Rishi Sunak. Uh, and it's, initially there was, there was, a, there was a, a, a negative reaction to the news, uh, but then afterwards trader, traders took the view uh, that Mr Sunak is probably more likely to be influenced uh, by Boris Johnson and you know there's been speculation that, Pre that Prime Minister Johnson is keen to have some sort of kind of spending spree some sort of Trump style spending spree to kind of uh, reinvigorate the British economy a lot of uncertainty is behind over the British economy in relation to the to the, to the UK leaving the European Union and the question still remains what's the relationship going to look like with the European Union after the transition period so there's, there's talk <coughs> excuse me a Prime Minister Johnson wants to kind of have some sort of a spending spree and uh, Mr Sunak could be the man uh, to deliver to deliver that via the budget which is due out next month. So we can see here even when we did have a move to the downside recently um, this day last week on the, on pound dollar it, it, um, it received support nicely from the 100 day moving average along here this, this yellow line. While we hold above that we could look to continue to press on higher I should be should be pressing higher from here. We could be looking at retesting this area here in just north of one spot thirty two, and a move beyond that could take us up towards uh, the late December highs in at one spot thirty two eighty four. But on the flip side, if we do take out the uh, the lows on the uh, seen on the on the tenth of February, we could head back down towards this area here in around one spot twenty seven sixty eight. I'll take a look now at some of the uh, some, big, some of the big commodities. Starting off with gold. So gold hit a multi-year high at, at, the, uh, at the beginning of the year, and it's largely been trading range bound since then. Uh, but still, as you can see here, the wider trend is still very much in play. Uh, so if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at retargeting the highs of early of early February in around 50.93, and a move beyond that could take this potentially up towards 1600. Uh, if we do drift lower, support might be found in this zone here in around 15.60, and even if you go below that, 
uh, support can be found from this area here, the lows of mid mid January in around 1536, which actually essentially coincides with this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. And notice how that metric acted nicely as both resistance and support uh, in December. And if the metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be important in the future, although there are no guarantees. And lastly, I should come on to the oil market. And oil has had a terrible time recently. Um, China is the largest importer of the energy in the world. And with all the fears surrounding what's going on, the coronavirus, traders have been uh, very worried that the China's demand or appetite for oil is going to, is going to dwindle. So we've seen some, some, uh, some major declines in oil in the last few weeks, although we do appear to be staging something of a comeback. So if you take a look here, we fell on the... And last week we saw levels. Last we saw levels um, that were kind of 13 month low, so clearly very bearish. But yet we did see a fairly decent rebound the last um, in, the, in the in the last week. We did see a fairly decent move to the upside um, on the on the um, on, on, on Brent crude oil. I take a look at it on a weekly chart and see what it looks like there. So this candle here. Um, looks has 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 the potential to be a bullish weekly reversal so we could look to get a press on higher from here and should that be the case we could head back up toward the kind of psychologically important 60 bucks a barrel we can also see that this red line here is the 200 week moving average because i'm looking at the weekly weekly chart that metric acted nicely as a support on a few occasions and resistance as well so that metric in at 60 spot 86 might is, could be uh, could potentially be an area for resistance should be pressed on higher from here so keep an eye on that if on the other hand if the market uh, doesn't manage to kind of have a full rebound perhaps it could just kind of pu push a few dollars higher before it turns over on itself and then falls back into the wider downward trend it should be fall lower from here it could take us back to this zone here in round 53 spot 76 and below that it could take us back down towards the 52 area That was Brent crude. It's a similar-ish looking story with WTI. Similar story here whereby we've had an aggressive sell-off between early January uh, until early February. But we have been rebounding higher from here. Uh, we can see a steady increase in positive momentum. So if the market does manage to push, push on higher, we could look at targeting this zone here in around 54 in the near term should the uh, should the should the should the rebound continue. But if the market does manage to turn over on itself yet again, we could look at heading back below 51, back below 50, and potentially down towards the lows seen uh, at the beginning of the month in around 49, spot 29. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking to head down towards 49 and 48, so on and so forth. Um, that is it for this video of this uh, particular this particular week. Have a good trading week and good luck.